Welcome to another Indie Dev Showcase, highlighting the many indie games we play here on the channel. If you'd like to submit a game for a future video, please reach out. But otherwise, let's begin. We are starting things off with Curse of Eternity. This is an action RPG where you are trying to rid the world of evil by exploring it, defeating all the bad guys, getting loot, and of course, getting good. As you can tell by the footage, the game definitely draws similarities of that of a Souls like. You'll explore massive environments trying to deal with the variety of enemies. Now, what's interesting, the game does borrow from a RPG design, in that you'll choose from one of three starting classes and then you can further outfit and customize your character as you get further in. This is one of those games that we tried this one out on stream a while ago and there is certainly a lot here. If you're kind of expecting the same level of polish and kind of fidelity of that of a From Software Souls Lake or action game, then this is not going to go that far. But this feels like a very ambitious design from an indie studio. And if you're someone who is looking for another action game to play, I would definitely give this one a check. And at some point, we should probably go back and see just how far this Curse of Eternity actually goes. And now we turn to Wizard Chess. That, despite the name, does not really involve as much chess playing as one would expect. The footage that you're seeing is taken from early access and may not represent the current version of the game. This is a kind of tactical strategy roguelike, where you'll build a team out of various characters and pieces, and take on wizards in kind of these, I guess, quote unquote, chess fights. You'll choose which areas to go to, and you'll be able to choose different rewards, characters, resources, and so on. How this game works is that each character slash class has different abilities and means of attacking. You only can move a character once per turn. When you move, everyone or the enemy will then make a turn on one of their pieces. You'll have different abilities that you can activate, and you'll need to figure out the best ways of moving your characters and getting the most out of each turn. If a character runs out of health, they are permanently dead. You can also sell your units to get access to other things as well. And there is definitely strategy here in terms of how you'll need to build your team and of course order your characters around to do different actions. Some characters may receive bonuses if they attack while another person is attacking. Some may be able to provide bonuses if someone's hurt or healing and all that good stuff. And there is definitely some fun here for fans looking for a more, I guess, tactical minded roguelike. And we were having a lot of fun in it until, of course, as we were playing this, I found a soft lock that developers never heard of and caused the game to crash. Because again, that's what I do here. So if you are looking for another roguelike to check out, I would recommend Wizard Chess. And if you're not quite ready to check out an early access, then at least keep it on your radar for when the game hits 1.0. And now we have Arden Fall. Please note the footage that you are seeing is taken from the early access kind of demo build and what you see may not represent the current version. For this game, this is a kind of indie take on the open world RPG of a Bethesda style or Elder Scrolls style. You'll build a character, decide what class and what kind of race you'll choose and then you are let loose in the world of Arden Fall. You will explore try to deal with all kinds of enemies, complete quests, and make your mark on the land. So this game again is going all in on the kind of Elder Scrolls, that kind of style of combat and exploration. If you're not careful, you can of course annoy NPCs and get locked out of quests, maybe cause trouble, and of course find all kinds of gear and upgrades and of course leveling up to do. Now, if you're a longtime fan of the channel, then you know that I'm not the biggest, like, Elder Scrolls, that style of CRPG fan. So the game doesn't quite work for me, 
but I know that quite a few of you watching this do enjoy the likes of an Elder Scrolls style game. And if you are a fan of those and looking for an indie take, then definitely check out the demo for Arden Fall. And now we have, and I gotta make sure I get this name right, Sippin' Hot, Blickety Block, and Bop Those Bad Bow Boys Down to Size Supreme. Yes, that is the name of this one, and no, this is not the longest game title name that I've seen. I actually have one that's even longer than this. This is a casual style, kind of like arcade game. It reminds me a little bit of, say, like a Flappy Bird meets the old Jaws. You'll take your character and fly around trying to avoid objects and enemy hazards. In order to defeat an enemy, you must kind of land higher than them on the field. If they hit you, it is game over. As you play, you'll be able to unlock more characters, more kind of like costumes, stuff like that. But all in all, this is a game that, again, is designed to be very simple, very casual. You're not going to be getting dozens of hours of entertainment out of this one, but I like the very charming graphic style, and again, the segments of this game are meant to be very cozy, very relaxing to play. So if you're someone who is looking for kind of a great game to play with kids, or again, something very simple to unwind to with a very nice aesthetic, then I would give this one a check. And now we have Crafty Survivors. Please note the footage you are seeing is taken from kind of its early access demo, and what you see may not represent the current version of it. As you can tell, this is a Bullet Heaven Lake, where you'll play as a variety of characters who have been called on to save the land when all the heroes have been corrupted. And to do that, you must use the power of cooking, seamstressing, and a lot more in order to deal with these enemies. The twist on this one is that each character has access to completely different skills. Each character has unique skills that can then be further comboed or modified based on taking other abilities. So you take the right skill A with skill B, it will create a skill C that is kind of a mixture of the two. There's a lot more action and reflex play in Crafty Survivor compared to some of the other ones that we've played. So if you're looking for kind of a more like slower pace or more of an auto one, this one may be a little bit too extreme in that respect, but there are the option or the, there is the option to turn on like auto cast or auto skill use. There is of course a persistent layer as you'll use money and resources you get from each area to upgrade your little village, which will in turn provide you with permanent boosts, stats, unlocks, and all that good stuff. There is definitely potential here as kind of a more, or I guess like we're up to maybe like a second or third generation Bullet Heaven like. So if you're looking for one that gives you a lot more in terms of fighting the enemies, and you're not completely tired of the genre, then definitely check out Crafty Survivors. And for the last game of our video, we turn it to Bad Writer. This is a kind of short form narrative game where your mission is to spend the next 30 days trying to pursue your career as a writer. You'll decide what you do on each day. This will affect your kind of inspiration as well as your happiness that you'll need to keep up in order to write really good stories, which you'll then submit and hopefully earn some money for them. As someone who is also trying to write some things and also needs to start writing his next design book, this game does hit a little bit too close to home. But I also don't have a uh, <laughs> wife or a cat to deal with. So this is a game that again is very short form. At the end of 30 days, you'll get an ending based on how well you did. Whether you submit enough stories, earn enough money, or failed. And it's definitely more on the cozy, wholesome side of things. Not the longest game by any stretch of the imagination, but if you're someone who wants to see a somewhat loose interpretation of the trials and tribulations of being a writer, then you should give this one a check. That's going to do it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to do the YouTubing stuff people tell you to do. If you're interested in more of my thoughts on design, check out my books wherever they are sold. 
visit our Discord and Patreon and come back for daily discussions on game design here and on game wisdom, where you some of the art and science of games.